Hi everybody. In this video, we are going to talk about what the sine, cosine, and tangent functions uh, graphs look like. So take a look at this circle over here with this line going around it, and then take a look at these graphs over here. This green graph is actually the sine function, and the purple is the cosine function. Remember that the sine function refers to the y value where the where the line uh, here meets the circle. So you can see going from zero degrees up to 90 degrees, this y value is increasing and increasing and increasing, then it comes to a maximum. Then it's going down and down and down, okay, the y value, which is vertical, until finally at 180 degrees, it would reach zero. Now it's getting larger and larger and larger, but in the negative direction, and then at 270 degrees, it would reach the largest, min uh, negative value, negative one, and then it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets back to zero uh, over here. And now let's take a look at this purple function. Now we're taking a look at the x value. So it started off large and now it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, now zero. Okay, now it's getting larger and larger and larger, but in the negative direction. So you can see it going down there until it finally reaches the maximum negative number over here at 180 degrees. Now it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller again, going back to zero. It'll reach zero at 270 degrees. And then it's getting larger and larger and larger again until it reaches 360 degrees. Then it'll be back at its maximum value of one. All right, so I'll just give a quick shout out to Shuford's site uh, for providing me with that excellent GIF or GIF, I still don't know how to pronounce it. Um, all right, now over here, we see the same sine <coughs> and cosine functions that we saw a minute ago. They're just uh, on two separate uh, axes now, and they're also drawn in different colors. I got these from another website called mathisfun.com, which uh, is a good website, I, I would recommend that. And it's important to understand what's being um, marked on the X and the Y axes for, for both of these. For this, for this sine graph, on the X axis, we have the angle measures. And here you can see the angle measures written in radians and also degrees. Um, and that's the same as on the cosine function. The X, on the X axis, we have the angle measure. Okay, so like, whatever angle we're talking about between this line over here and the x-axis of this picture over here, that's what's being labeled on the x-axis of this graph, okay, this angle over here. And again, also on the cosine function, you can see it written out in radians and degrees. But then on the y-axis for the sine function, what are we talking about here? So for the sine function, the y-axis of this graph tells us the vertical height of the line, okay? So sometimes something which is helpful, it's just the y value, but uh, sometimes it's helpful to imagine a flashlight. So I'll draw a flashlight over here. Okay, imagine a flashlight shining light over here, um, and then there would be a shadow. If it's shining light on this line, there would be a shadow just like that, right? And if we move the line up a little bit, then, then the shadow would get a little higher, right? So that's, that's one way of thinking about it. Again, we are just talking about the Y value of where this line meets the circle. Okay, so that's what is on the y-axis for the sine graph. But you have to be careful. Um, the y-axis for the cosine graph is actually talking about the x value over here. So now imagine that the flashlight, instead of being over here, is over here pointed in this direction. How did I draw it before? Oh, so I forgot how to draw a flashlight. Oh, that's embarrassing. That does not, wait, how do you? I remember now. 
Okay, so imagine the flashlight is there now. Then the shadow would look like this, right? So that's what's being marked on the y-axis for the cosine graph. It's actually the, um, the x value of where this line meets the circle, okay? This would be the x value over here for this angle. Now, if you are trying to remember how to sketch the sine and the cosine graphs, then it's a good idea to start at zero degrees and then count by 90, okay? 90 degrees or pi over two radians, if you like. So if we start at zero degrees here and we wanna sketch the sine uh, function, then we would take a look at, we would take a look at the y value. So at zero degrees, the y value is zero. So that would be this point over here. Then if we go up by 90 degrees, so, whoops. So now we are at 90 degrees and the y value is one. So on this graph here at 90 degrees or pi over two radians, the y value is one. You can see that says one over there. Okay, if we go another 90 degrees, now we are at 180 degrees and the y value is zero. So that's this point. Okay, or if you want radians in radians, that would be pi radians. The y value would be zero. Okay, and then if we at 270 degrees, the y value would be negative one and then back to zero. Well, th really this would be 360 degrees. We're back where we started, but since we went all the way around, we would say 360 degrees now. Then we, we would be back at uh, zero for the Y value. So at 270 degrees, the Y value was negative one. That was back here. And then at 360 degrees, the Y value is zero again, okay? And we don't have to stop there. So you could just keep going around and around and around like this. Okay, you do not have to stop at 360 degrees. You, okay, you can just keep going around and around and around. And then this, this sine function would just keep repeating itself over and over and over again, okay? You could also go the other way. You could go backwards. And when I say backwards, I mean clockwise. That's considered the negative direction for angle measures. Um, in this picture here is going clockwise. So if I, let's pretend that we're back at zero degrees again, or zero radians. If I had started by going clockwise 90 degrees, then I would be at negative 90 degrees over here and the Y value would be negative one. Okay, and then if at negative 180 degrees, the Y value would be zero. At negative 270 degrees, the Y value would be one. And then at negative 360 degrees, the Y value would be zero. Okay, so negative 180 degrees, it was zero. At negative 270, we were up here, Y value is one. And at negative 360 degrees, since we went all the way around, the Y value is again zero. Okay, and again, you do not have to stop there. You could keep going around and around and around and around like this. And then all that would happen is that this wave would just keep repeating itself in the same way. Okay. And for the, uh, for the um, cosine graph, how do I get rid of this thing? Okay. For the cosine graph, it, we're basically doing the same thing, but you have to remember we're paying attention to the X value on here instead of the Y value. Okay, so at zero degrees, let me just underline all the X values now. The thing is just not, it's not going away. It doesn't want to give me a, a break. Okay, now we're paying attention to the X value. So if we at zero degrees, the X value is one. At 90 degrees, it's zero. At 
180 degrees, it's negative 1. And at 270 degrees, it's 0 again. At, at 360 degrees, it's 1. Okay, so at 0 degrees, it was 1. 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, it's 0. Okay, again, if we were to come up here, put the line there, and then shine a flashlight like that, there would be no shadow anymore because this is straight up. So if I put the flashlight here, there's no shadow over here, right? So at 90 degrees, um, the X value over here is zero. All right, and again, we could just keep going around and around and around and around and around like this, and this wave would just repeat itself. Okay, it would just keep going in the same way. And we could also go in the clockwise direction, which would give us negative angle measures. Okay, and then at negative 90 degrees, the y, the, sorry, the x value over here would be zero, or negative pi over two radians, if you like measuring in radians at negative pi radians or negative 180 degrees, then the x value would be negative one. Okay, here you see it's 180 degree, negative 180 degrees or negative pi radians. The value is negative one there. Okay, at negative 270 degrees, then the X value over here is back to zero. Again, there's no shadow. And then at negative 360 degrees or negative two pi radians, now this is all the way, now this is stretched out as far as it can go in the X direction here. Okay, the X value is one. So it's at its maximum over here. Okay, you can see the one over there. All right, and again, we could just keep going and this graph would just repeat itself over and over and over again. Okay. Okay, now something else to notice about the sine and the cosine graphs is that they are curves, right? They're not straight. There are no straight lines in the sine graph or the cosine graph. I know that it might look like, let's say from here to here, is a straight line, but it actually isn't. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe it'll be easier to see. It kind of looks like it's straight here, but really, really it's not. Um, this even over here, this would be somewhat curved. And then clearly over here it is curved, right? Um, so there are no straight lines in the sine and the cosine graphs. They are not, linear in any way. And why is that? Well, to understand why, let's bring uh, the flashlight back. So I'm going to draw the flashlight again, right over here. Let's do it for the sign graph. So I'm going to draw my flashlight over here. So I'm shining a light over here. And over here at zero degrees, the y value it, where this line meets the circle is zero. Now what happens as we go from zero degrees, let's say to 45 degrees, I'll just pick an, uh, an angle measure in the middle. So if I move this up to 45 degrees, then the shadow would be over here at approximately 0 0.7, right? This is 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, okay? So, and you can see on, on the graph, we go from the origin, which is 0, 0, so 0 degrees and 0 for the y value over here. We want, when we get to 45 degrees, I'll write it in. So this is 45 degrees over here. Then we went up to about 0 
Okay, so this is pretty steep over here. We went up pretty quickly when we went when we changed the angle measure by 45 degrees. So we went to zero degree from zero degrees to 45 degrees. The y value changed pretty quickly. The y value went from zero to 0.7 as the angle measure changed from zero degrees to 45 degrees. Now what we'll do is let's move this line by another 45 degrees and see what happens. So now I'm at 45 degrees. If I move it by another 45 degrees, then I would be at 90 degrees. And what would my shadow look like now? Well, the shadow did increase. Okay, this is straight up now. So if I'm shining a flashlight like this, then all of this would be shadow behind it. Okay, and then at 90 degrees, we would see that the Y value over here is one. Now you can see we did not go up by quite as much from here to here, even though we did change the angle by the same amount as we did the first time. From here to here, we're going from 0 0.7 to one, which is a difference of 0 0.3. So again, to recap what we did, we changed by 45 degrees both times. Here we went from zero to 45 degrees, which is a difference of 45 degrees. And then we went from 45 degrees to 90 degrees, which is again, a difference of 45 degrees. So we changed by the same angle measure both times but the Y value did not change by the same amount both times. Going from zero to 0 0.7, that's a difference of 0 0.7. And then going from 0 0.7 to one, that's a difference of 0 0.3. Okay, if we wanted to make a little table of what we did, we'll say uh, the what the angle measure was and what the, um, the Y value on this picture was. First we were at zero degrees, then 45 degrees, then 90 degrees. So the, the Y values were zero, approximately 0 0.7 and then one. So you can see that we changed by 45 degrees both times. But here we went up by 0 0.7 and here we went up by 0 0.3. So we do not have a constant unit rate. Just like we measure the speed of a car in miles per hour, which means how many miles does a car go in one hour? If somebody were to ask you, what is the the change in the y value for every change of one degree, you would not be able to answer them because it depends on where you are in the circle. If I'm back here, then if I change the angle, the y value is increasing by a lot. But if I were already close to the top, then I'm already up pretty high. So if I change the angle more, the Y value would still increase, but it's not going to increase by as much from here to here as it would from here to here. Okay. And uh, you could also say that the change in the Y value would be pretty strong from here to here, but pretty weak from here to here, because this is already pretty low. If I then change the angle measure and move it to here, then I didn't change the Y value. I was already pretty low to begin with. So going from here to here didn't get me much lower, but here I'm not very low at all. If I change the angle measure just by a little bit, then I got a lot lower relative to where I was before. So that's why this is not, these graphs are not linear over here because the the shadows, right, the Y values and the X values of where this line meets the circle, they don't change in a linear way. They don't change by the same amount for every, if even if you change the angle measure by the same amount. 
Okay, now so far in this video, we have not said anything about tangent. Um, just a, a recap, if we have some angle, then the sine of that angle is the y value of where the line meets the circle. The cosine of that angle is the x value of where the line meets the circle. And the tangent would be the y value divided by the x value. So for example, if we choose 60 degrees, then, okay, so this would be about, this would be 60 degrees here. The line would meet the circle at this point over here. This point would be the point 0 0.5, and then I'm just gonna round this over here, um, approximately 0 0.87. Okay, so the X value is would be 0 0.5. Okay, if you wanna, for example, if you were to shine a flashlight down this way, then the shade over here would come out to 0 0.5. The Y value would be about 0 0.87. So if you were to shine the flashlight this way, then the shade would come up to here about 0 0.87, okay? And then to find the tangent, we would do this number, which I have out to more decimal places than I had it over here. To find the tangent, we would do this number and divide it by this number. So we would take the sine and divide it by the cosine. And then in the case of 60 degrees, this is what we would get if we divide this by this. <clears throat> now let me show you the graph, uh, what the tangent graph looks like. Okay, this is the tangent graph, and I put it underneath the sine graph and the cosine graph, which you have already seen. This is the graph for tangent, which looks a little bit weirder than, than these over here. It's not, it's not a wave like, like the sine graph and the cosine graph. Okay, so where does this graph come from? Well, it comes just from dividing uh, the sine, for every, degree measure, for every angle measure, we just divide the sine by the cosine. So for example, if we wanted to figure out what the, what the tangent of zero degrees is, how would we do that? Well, we would find the sine of zero degrees, which would be zero. And the cosine of zero degrees, which is one, okay, cosine of zero degrees is one. And then we would do zero divided by one, which is zero. So you can see over here on the tangent graph, the tangent of zero degrees is zero. Okay, now what if we wanted to find the tangent of, let's say 45 degrees, So the sine of 45 degrees, which would be halfway between zero and 90 degrees, is about 0 0.7. We said that earlier, okay? It's 0 0.707, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the cosine of 45 degrees is also about 0 0.7. It's exactly the same as the sine of, of 45 degrees. So if we were to divide these two numbers, then we would get exactly one. So you can see that on the tangent graph here for 45 degrees, the tangent of 45 degrees is one. Okay, you can see that there. Now what happens, I'm just gonna stay in this area for right now. What happens if we increase the angle measure by a little bit? Well, you can see if we go, if we increase a little bit, then the sign, the value for the sign would also increase. The value for the cosine would decrease. Okay, so we're at 45 degrees right now. If we go up, let's say to, well, let's just do what we had before uh, a moment ago. If we go up to, let's say 60 degrees, 
then the sine went from about 0 0.7 to about 0 0.87, so it increased. The cosine went down, so it went from about 0 0.7 to 0 0.5 if we're talking about a 60 degree angle okay so for the tangent of 60 degrees then we would we would take this number and divide it by this number we would get 1.7 which is a little bit more than what we got before okay remember before when we did 45 degrees we got one for the tangent if we go up a little bit now we're at 1.7 okay what if we were to go up to 70 degrees? Again, the tangent increased. Why did it increase? Because as we move up, I'm not going to go past 90 degrees. I'm just gonna get closer and closer to 90 degrees over here. As I get closer and closer to 90 degrees, you can see that the value for sine is increasing. It's getting higher and higher. Meanwhile, the value for cosine is decreasing. It's getting lower and lower. Well, what happens if we imagine that you have a fraction and you can think of, of the tangent as being like the fraction between the sine and the cosine. So think of this as the numerator and this as the denominator. What happens to the value of a fraction if the numerator increases and the denominator decreases? Well, that fraction, the value of that fraction would get higher and higher. If the numerator is increasing and the denominator is decreasing, and then we divide the numerator by the denominator, then the value that, that we get after we divide would just keep going up and up. So you can see what happens as I increase the degrees. Let, let's go to 80 degrees now. You can see the sign right now for 70 degrees is at about 0 0.94, okay? The value for cosine at 70 degrees is about 0 0.34. And then when you divide those, you get 2.7, blah, blah, blah. Let's go up to 80 degrees now. You can see that the sine, again, it increased, the cosine decreased. So if you take a fraction and you increase the numerator and you decrease the denominator, the value of that fraction, when you divide the numerator by the denominator, it's going to go up. So we went from, what was it a second ago? We went from 2.7 to 5.6, which was kind of a big jump. Now I'm only gonna go up by five degrees. Let's go up to 85 degrees. Let's see what happens. Now I only went up by five degrees there. The tangent, it just about doubled. It went from 5.6 to 11 point something. Okay, what if I go up by just another few degrees? Let's try 88 degrees. Now, it, I only went up by three degrees there you can see that the tangent more than doubled. What did we have before at 85 degrees? It was uh, 11 point something, right? Now we're already at 28 and we only went up by three degrees. So the tangent, it more than doubled in when we went up just by three degrees there. Let's go up by one degree now from 88 to 89. Let's see what happened. Tangent went up to 57. Why is this happening? Because now the sign is getting is getting closer and closer and closer to one. Okay, remember the, at 90 degrees exactly, the value for sine is one. What's happening to the cosine? It's becoming almost zero. It's becoming so super tiny because the cosine at 90 degrees is exactly zero. As we get closer and closer to that 90 degrees, the cosine is getting closer and closer to zero. So it's getting super, super tiny. What happens when you take something and you divide it by a super tiny number, then the value that you get would be very large, right? That's what's happening to the tangent over here. If I go up by 0.1 degrees now, I got up to 63. I only went up by 0.1 degree and it was a relatively large jump there. What if I were to go to, I don't know, let's, you could, 
try, let's try 89.5. I'm at 114. Let's try 89.9. Oops, what happened there? Oh, I typed it into there. That's not what I meant. 89.9. Okay, that was a pretty big jump. So you can see here, you might have looked at this earlier and you were wondering what this dotted line over here meant. Well, take a look at what happens at exactly 90 degrees or pi over two radians. Um, at that angle measure, the sine is exactly one and the cosine is exactly zero. Now, what happens when you divide anything? It doesn't have to be the number one. What happens when you divide a number by zero well, that is undefined, which literally means that mathematicians have not even decided what it means. Um, so it is dividing by zero is undefined in math. And so there's no there's no value for it. And that's what this dotted line over here at 90 degrees means. And the same thing, by the way, would happen at 270 degrees at negative 270 degrees. So, for example, at negative 270 degrees, uh, the sine is still one and the cosine is zero. At negative 90 degrees, the sine would be negative one and the cosine would be zero. So again, we're dividing by zero, which is undefined. So you're not really supposed to do that. Uh, you can't divide by zero. All right, so basically what's happening here, let's go back to this area where we were before. What's happening is the tangent just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing without limit. It's going to get as high as you want. Eventually, it'll reach a million. It'll reach a billion. It'll reach a quadrillion. It's just keep going. going. It's just going to go higher and higher and higher and higher without limit. You could pick any number and it's going to get there and then it's going to exceed it. And that's happening because the cosine just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So when you divide by really tiny numbers, then you get super large numbers as a result. So this is just keep going to keep getting higher and higher and higher. But you can't have a value for it exactly at 90 degrees because then you would be dividing by zero and that is undefined. Now, since the sine functions and the cosine functions keep repeating themselves over and over, uh, the tangent function will also keep repeating itself over and over because the tangent function is just the sine function divided by the cosine function. So you can see that this pattern does repeat itself. So I don't need to talk about the entire graph because I would basically be talking about the same thing. But I will talk about just a couple other uh, parts of this graph here. So we started um, when we were as we when we started talking about the tangent function, we started here and then we went this way. What if we had gone this way? What if we had started here and then gone to the left? What's happening? The tangent function just keeps getting lower and lower and lower and we would say that it approaches negative infinity over here. Over here, we would say, as it gets closer and closer to 90 degrees, it approaches infinity. It approaches positive infinity. Here, as we get closer and closer to negative 90 degrees, we would say that the tangent function approaches negative infinity. It can't actually get to negative infinity. That wouldn't make sense, but we say that it gets it gets lower and lower and lower. So just the way of saying that is we it approaches negative infinity. Now, why is that happening? Why is this in negative territory here? Well, that's happening because over here, the sine is in negative territory. So again, the way that we get tangent is just by dividing the sine by the cosine. So if we were to take, uh, let's say this point over here, Uh, let's see, that would be uh, negative 30 degrees, right? Okay, so at negative 30 degrees, then the value for sine is exactly negative 0.5. The value for cosine would be 
about 0.86 blah 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 so that would be positive what happens when you take a negative and you divide it by a positive then you would get a negative result so that's why the tangent is negative and then the same idea as what we had before as we keep getting closer and closer to 90 degrees the sign is still negative it's going to get closer and closer to negative one the cosine would get closer and closer to zero just like before and as we get closer and closer to zero then the when we divide the absolute value anyway would get larger and larger even though it would uh, the actual value would be negative okay so that's why this is going down 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 like that now let's go back to what we were doing before where we're getting closer and closer to 90 degrees and sine is getting going up and cosine is getting closer and closer to zero. So the tangent just keeps going up and up and up and up and up without limit, okay? And then the tangent at exactly 90 degrees is not even defined. But then what happens if we go past 90 degrees by a little bit? You might think that, well, this was so high before, it just kept getting higher and higher and higher. You might think that a little bit after 90 degrees, let's say 91 degrees, this would still be pretty high. But no, actually it's going, it's starting up again from way down here. So if we look at 91 degrees, we get a relatively large negative number, okay? Let, let's get even closer to 90 actually. Let's go just a little bit past 90. How about 90.01? One. Let's see what happens if we do that. Okay, if we do just a little bit past the 90 degree mark, 90.01, then we're at negative 5,729. So it's still a pretty large number in terms of the absolute value, um, but it is negative. And why is it negative? Well, that's because as we go past the 90 degree mark, then over here, the sine is still positive, but the cosine is negative now, right? We were getting closer and closer to zero, and then we pass zero for cosine, and now we're in negative territory for cosine. So now we have a positive divided by a negative, okay? Um, so, and oh, around here, the cosine is still very small, which is why we're getting a very large absolute value over here for tangent. As we move further away from the 90 degree mark, then the absolute value for the cosine is getting larger and larger. So let's say if we, we wanted to move to 95 degrees, now the cosine, the, it's still pretty small, um, but it's getting a little bit larger. The absolute value is getting a little bit larger. What if we move away from it further? Let's say, I don't know, 110 degrees, okay? The absolute value keeps increasing. Even though it's still negative, the absolute value keeps increasing. So we're not getting such huge absolute values for the tangent anymore, okay? Um, and that's why as we move away from 90 degrees on this side, the tangent, at least the absolute value of the tangent is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it finally reaches zero at pi radians or 180 degrees. And that's because we have, for that one, it would be zero divided by negative one, which is still just zero. And then it passes that and then it keeps going up again, right? Notice that over here in this area, the tangent is positive because both the sine and the cosine are negative. And when we take a negative and divide it by a negative, then we get a positive. And that pattern just keeps repeating itself, all right? So you can find what the tangent is at any point along this graph here, just by taking what the sine is at that point and dividing by what the cosine is. Just remember you can't divide by zero and that's why you have these dotted lines over here wherever the cosine uh, is zero. Okay, so I am going to end the video there and have a great day.